Hey, I'm David. I'm living off grid here in southern Missouri, and today I'm going to do a video for all the Prepper Project fans on end time transportation. One of the reasons I'm doing a video on this Polaris today is most people are not aware that the Polaris makes a Ranger that's electric. They've been making this since 2010. It's just called the Ranger EV. You can find it on their website and find out as much information as you like. But uh, the good thing about the Polaris is it's very high quality. It's built on the Ranger 400 chassis. So it's very capable uh, off-road. And basically it just has batteries under the seat. You have two 48-volt uh, packs, uh, eight batteries total, deep cycle. And then uh, you have your controller under the seat and it powers the electric motor in the rear. And you have a drive shaft to the front. So it's all-wheel drive. You have a switch right here on the dash where you can switch it from one wheel drive mode you can go two wheel and lock the rear wheels so it's an electric locking rear axle and all wheel drive is an electric locking front so in reality uh, if you want to keep from tearing up your yard for example you just run it in one wheel drive mode which is fine uh, it has a differential so you're not tearing up the grass you just try to take some different routes uh, so you don't uh, wear one spot down, but you're not tearing up the grass, which is important. You can see it has turf tires on it, so it's very well uh, designed for small uh, amounts of use out in the yard or in a small uh, scale. It's not really uh, for replacing your regular ATV or utility vehicle where you might need to go many, many miles with it. The range, of course, is your biggest thing on electric. now. The way I use it really is perfect for the way this thing is made. I only have a few acres here. I have gardens. I have a steep hill, which is one of my main problems, having to go up and down the hill constantly, uh, carrying dirt or mulch or whatever we're doing today in the gardens, plants. Uh, doing all that by hand would be very difficult. I know some people use their uh, garden mower and a little uh, uh, trailer in the back, but uh, in reality, this is uh, much better. I do a lot of work off the back of the vehicle as well, so uh, it has a lot of uses. In fact, uh, when I bought it, I know my wife wasn't too impressed that I was spending so much money. These are about almost uh, 12000 for a brand new one, and uh, it's a lot of money when you look at it from that aspect. You could drive a, a buy a vehicle that would do the same thing, but you're using fuel. All I'm doing is plugging into 110 volts at night and recharging the vehicle. In the morning, you just turn the key, flip the switch, off you go. It doesn't have to warm up or do anything special. It's always ready to go, summer, winter, whenever. It doesn't make any noise. That's the other big thing. I've heard uh, ATVs off in the distance. It could be a mile away or more climbing hills, and you can hear that motor. But on this vehicle, it doesn't matter where you're going. You don't hear it. Now, yes, if you go run across the, charging across the gravel, you're going to hear that noise from the gravel. But if you're in the grass, some place that's not, uh, you know, you don't have all these dry leaves, things like that. I've gotten within 10 feet of people coming up behind them before they realized that there was something back there. It's that quiet. Yeah, that's not the main reason people would want to buy it. But in the end time, if uh, you're like myself, I'm totally off grid here, so having something I can charge with electricity and use it every day. Yes, I can get a few miles out of uh, range out of it, even out here where it's hilly and that kind of thing. Uh, I've driven it on some very steep hills and four-wheel drive. It's very capable, but yes, it uses up the batteries much faster. I know they advertise a, a, up to a 50-mile range <coughs> Excuse me. on a flat surface. I'd like to see the video when they did that. I suppose you could probably uh, coax that kind of range out of it, but... In reality, the way most people are going to use it, they'll never, uh, they'll never see that 50 miles. I can't imagine mine ever really going more than 30 miles, maybe on a flat surface. In max range, uh, it has the least uh, throttle response, so it pulls less energy from the batteries. <clears throat> you can go up to 25 miles per hour in high, but I would think that would use them up pretty fast. So, if you go the right speed, you could probably get that kind of range out of them. In reality. Out here on these hills, I don't think I've ever gotten more than about five miles of range out of it. Around the yard, you don't really know uh, what kind of range. Uh, you're just moving short distances from A to B. 
you don't have a uh, gauge on here that tells you how many miles you've gone. All you've got is an hour meter. You've got a, a forward and reverse. You've got a switch to lock the rear axles. And then you've got, and go into all wheel drive. And then you've got a low, a medium, and a high switch here on the dash. The low gives you the most torque, which you really need uh, if I'm going up a hill, if I'm loaded. They say you can put up to 500 pounds of weight in the back. So, uh, yes, I've loaded it down at least uh, that much. I pulled a trailer with it. They say it'll pull 1,250 pounds. I've had maybe half of that on the back, and in low, it'll pull it up some pretty good hills. So that's where you get the most power, you get the most regen. When you're going down the hill, it'll hold your speed, and it'll only let it go just so fast, and then it, it sucks a little bit of power back into the batteries. So that's a good thing. Uh, I'm not sure how much uh, in reality that really helps, but it is it is made uh, into it automatically when you're in low, you get that regen. That's kind of good. It keeps you off the brakes, that kind of thing. In fact, most of the time I hardly ever uh, touch the brake. You don't really need it. But uh, and you have some front lights. You have uh, front lights that are as good as most cars, I suppose. At any rate, uh, it drives like a regular uh, vehicle. There's nothing unusual about it except that it's ready to go as soon as you turn the switch. Now I'll do a walk around, I'll show some of the inside of it. But yes, uh, I've got a windshield and a roof on mine. Those are the two main things that most people would want. I made me a little rear view mirror, which is uh, very handy. Uh, I don't usually drive it on the road or anything like that, but uh, it's nice to be able to back it up, see where you're going. You have a glove box, you have a couple of uh, few places to store stuff inside. In the back, I'm going to show this, you've got a dump bed, I'll walk in with the camera and I'll show some good insides. Uh, yes, you do have turf tires, but you can buy uh, better tires if you want uh, a good mud grip, you can buy whatever you want. That's all it takes to open it up. And let's walk in and do some close-ups and I'll show you what it looks like inside. So there's your 30 horse, it's an AC motor, you can see your uh, front drive shaft, you can see the batteries there up under the seat, so you've got eight deep, so deep cycle batteries there. So it's the same uh, 400 chassis, and then you can see you've got a class 3 hitch here on the back, fully independent suspension. There's your switches on your dash. Very basic. They do make a uh, version with uh, turn signals and so forth. I hear uh, some people have got them registered as a neighborhood electric vehicle in places where uh, you see people with golf carts driving around the street. You can also drive this thing just as well. The big yellow box is your charger. If you get the 220 volt charger, it'll charge faster not sure exactly how long it takes uh, because it depends on how far the batteries have been run down but I just charge mine overnight usually probably six hours will give you a full charge so there's a little overview of it I've been very happy with it I haven't had to uh, replace any parts and I've got a hundred hours on this one so far I've done uh, the only maintenance I've really done is just put uh, water in the batteries you have to check them. I check mine about every 10 hours. Make sure it's got water in it. Other than that, I haven't had to replace any parts. I've had a couple flat tires. Uh, that's about it. So when you consider that uh, it should be pretty maintenance free in most ways, it's uh, a very good vehicle to have. And I think in an end time uh, situation, it would be a, about the most usable thing you could possibly have. If you need to go down and get water out of the river, that kind of thing, or you want to go hunting, it's very quiet, so it's very, a lot of people buy it for that. You just have to remember your range is whatever it is, depending on the surface you're on, and uh, it's not like you can uh, charge it. I do have a good uh, small generator I can carry in the back, uh, which I've done a couple times, mainly if I just uh, get out and use it a little bit too much. You can't just pour uh, gas into it, so you got to have something. 
I've got a small Yamaha 2400 that I carry with me so I can just charge it. A couple of hours of charge will probably get you up and going if you just come up a little short. So that's what I do. At any rate, if you have any other questions, you want to know more about this vehicle, just uh, leave some uh, comments on the video and uh, hopefully we'll get something else up here for you. And uh, so this is uh, the Prepper Project and I thank you for watching me today. Thanks.